So in this video, we're going to look at how to convert recurring decimals to fractions. This video is split into four parts. We're going to start off with looking at simple examples like this one, where you've just got recurring digits. So one recurring digit, two, and then three recurring digits. Then we're going to move on to looking at, well, what happens when there's a non-recurring digit at the front? And what happens when there's two or more non-recurring digits at the front? And then finally, we're going to look at, well, how do you prove something like this? So we're going to start off with a, a bit of basics. So how do you write something like 0 0.1 as a recurring decimal? So the dot, dot at the top means there's one recurring digit. So the one recurs. So this is written as 0 0.1111. One, one, one. Okay. Now there's two dots on the next one. There's a dot here and there's a dot here. That means the one and the two keep recurring. So the one, two keep recurring like this. The next one, now notice there's no dot on the five, but there's a dot on the three and the two. And what that's telling me is this whole thing keeps recurring again and again. Okay, so that's going to be written as 0 0.352, 352, 352. Now looking at the next one, the first two digits are non-recurring. Okay, they don't have a dot at the top. So the recurring part starts here and it goes till there. So that's telling me the way you write this is 0 0.14 and then the 352 repeats. And finally, again with the last one, so we have the 0 0.1435, the dot is on the 2, so that's saying that the 2 is recurring. Okay, now press pause and I've got the example on the right. So hopefully you've got some pen and paper and you press pause and add a go at this, so that's going to be 0 0.333, that's going to be 0 0.3535 and so on, 0 0.671671. That 0 0.2854 keeps recurring. And 0 0.1956 keeps recurring. Now. So now looking at moving on to our first example. So the way my videos work, I'm going to do the example on the left, which is I do. You're then going to get, get a piece of paper and a pen, press pause, and I'll go at you do. So the way you convert this recurring decimal to a fraction using algebra is you would write x is equal to 0 0.4 for or dot dot dot. Okay, so one digit keeps recurring. Because there's only one digit that's recurring, we're going to times this by 10, and you'll see why in a second. So if I times this up by 10, each side, this becomes 10x, this becomes 4.444 4, 4. recurring. Now notice what happens when I subtract these two. Okay, if I subtract these two, the recurring parts cancel out. I am then left with, on the left-hand side, I am left with, 10x minus x. So if I do 10x minus x, that gives me 9x. So I'm just going to write that down. So that becomes 9x. And if I do 4, take away 0 now because the recurring parts cancel out. If I do 4, take away 0, I just get 4. And if I rearrange this, I get x is equal to 4 over 9. Okay, so that is how you convert a recurring decimal to a fraction. Now press pause and I've got the example on the right. Again, hopefully you start in the exact same range. So x is equal to 0 0.666 recurring. Then because there's only one digit recurring, you times it by 10. Then you have 10x is equal to 6.666. Now what that allows us to do is, it allows us to, the multiplying by 10 allows us to cancel out the recurring part. So when I subtract these two, the recurring bit cancels out. So if I was to subtract this and this, I'd get 9x here and I'd get 6 here. And I can rearrange that to 6 over 9. Now the question does say in its simplest form, so that can be reduced to 2 over 3. Moving on to the next one, now we've got two recurring digits. So again, we're going to write that out. So what does that actually look like? So that looks something like this. And now there are two recurring digits. Because there's two recurring digits, we're going to times it by 100. So if you times it by 100, we get 100x here. And we get 18.181818. Now, the important bit that you need to note is the multiplying by 100 now allows us to cancel out the recurring bit. Because we can, if we subtract these two, that cancels out. So, if I subtract 100x from an x, I get 99x. And if I subtract these two, well, the recurring bit just cancels out. I'm left with 18. Oh, let me just write that a little bit better. And we have x is equal to 18 over 99. Now, 18 and 99 both go into the 9 times table, so that becomes 2 over 11. Again, press pause and have a go at the example on the right. So here we have x is 0 0.36. The 36 keeps recurring. 
And now because there's two recurring digits, we're going to times it by 100. So the number of recurring digits tells us how many zeros to add when we multiply it. So if there was three recurring digits, you would times it by 1,000. So that's 36.36. And the important bit to note here is why we're actually multiplying. Because when we multiply, it then allows us to cancel out this recurring part. So then that becomes 99x is equal to 36, x is equal to 36 over 99. Again, 36 and 99 both go into the 9 times table, so that becomes 4 over 11. And finally, we can get the three digits that recur, so we have 0 0.115, 115, 115. Again, the exact same concept, because they are now three recurring digits, we had three zeros on here, which means we times each side by 1000. So that means we pop the decimal 3 to the right. Ooh, that's 105 dot, dot dot dot. And again, the important bit to note here is the reason we multiply it by 1000 in this case is because it allows us to cancel out the entire recurring part. So then when we go on to subtract these two, that gives me 9999x is equal to 115. So x is equal to 115 over 999. And if you did 99115 divided by 999, you'd find that they can't be simplified any further, so you can leave it in that form. Again, press pause and have a go at the example on the right. So there are three recurring digits, so we are going to times each side by 1000. Again, just to repeat myself, the reason we times by a thousand in this case is because it allows us to cancel out the recurring part when we come to subtract. So that's 999x is equal to 363. So x is equal to 363 or 999. Now it's quite clear that that can be divisible by the three times table. So that's going to become 1, 2, 1 divided by 333. 3, 3. So that's part one of this video. Press pause and have a go at these practice questions. When you're ready, press play for the answers. Here are the answers. Mark your work. Now moving on to the next part of this video. Now the difference here, these are more like typical exam questions where you've now got one non-recurring digit at the front. So notice with this, the seven is recurring, but the four isn't. So firstly, we'll, we'll start in the exact same manner. We write X is equal to, now write that out as a recurring decimal. So that's going to be four, seven, seven, seven. Okay, so the seven's recurring. Now we've got two things to note in this question. The first one is there's one non-recurring digit and there's one recurring digit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the non-recurring digit, the one in green, to the left. So we're going to times by 10 because there's one non-recurring digit. Again, if there is two non-recurring digits, we'll times by 100. So that then becomes 10x is equal to 4.777. Dot. Now you might be thinking, oh, do we just subtract now? No, we don't, because look at this bit. This bit does not match this bit. If we subtract these two, the recurring parts won't cancel out, because this is 777, this is 4777. So we go a step further now, and we're like, okay, how many recurring digits are there? Just one. Okay, so we're going to times each side by 10. Notice what, what colors I'm using with this as well, to help you see where the actual uh, multiplication is coming from. So if I times 10 by 100, by 10, sorry, I get 100. And if I multiply this by 10, I get 4, 7. And now notice what happens when I subtract these two. Okay, when I subtract these and these, this recurring part and this recurring part cancels out. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we are now going to subtract this and this side. So on the left, I now get 100 minus 10, which is 90x. And on the right, I get 47. So again, the recurring parts cancel out. We can ignore that. So we get 47, take away 4, and that gives me 43. And then I can rearrange that to be 43 over 90. And now 43 over 90 cannot be simplified any further. So again, there's one extra step in this question because there was a non-recurring digit. That's where the green um, sort of, that green bit comes from, okay? There's a non-recurring digit that you've got to take care of first, and then you look at the recurring digit. So again, hopefully you press pause and I go at this. So you're going to write this in the exact same manner. Again, I'm going to make use of my colors here. So we've got a one, one non-recurring digit, 
and one recurring digit. So if I use my green pen, so we're going to get rid of the non-recurring 6 first. So that's a 10. Up to 10x is equal to 6.888. Again, at this point, I can't subtract because the recurring parts don't match up. So then I look at, well, how many recurring digits are there? There's just one. So times each side by 10. Now I can cancel that and that out when I subtract. So on the left, I have 90x. And on the right, I have 62. So that's 68 minus 6. And then we can write x is equal to 62 over 90. And 62 over 90 can be reduced down to 31 or 45. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Now we've got one non-recurring digit and two recurring digits. So again, I can just sort of mark them here as well. So there's one non-recurring digit in green and there's two recurring digits. So we've got to take care of them both. So first steps first, we always just write out the recurring decimal. That looks something like this. Then we're going to take care of the green number. The green number is the non-recurring number. So we can, because there's only one of them. Notice I keep saying one of them. If there was two, it times by a hundred. If there was three, it times by a thousand. Okay. So the pattern is the exact same. Okay. So now I've taken care of the non-recurring number, but I can't subtract these two because the recurring parts don't match up. Okay. So this bit and this bit don't match up. So I can't just subtract the two. So I've got to go a step further and I've got to look at the recurring part. This Now there's two recurring numbers. Okay, that's important to note here because there's two recurring numbers, the nine and the two recur, are times each side by 100. So on the left, I get 100 times 10, which is 1000x. And on the right, when I times by 100, I have the decimal two to the right. So that gives me something like this. And now when I subtract this and this, this recurring part cancels out this recurring part. So I am left with nine, 990x on the left and on the right I have 9191 sorry then if I do 191 divided by 990 that can't be simplified so I leave that as 191 divided by 990 in its simplest form again press pause and have a go at the example on the right so hopefully starting in the exact same way we have one non-recurring number in green and we have two recurring numbers in blue so we have x is equal to 0 0.464 Six four dot dot dot. Now one non-recurring number times each side by ten. That gives me ten x is equal to four point six four six four recurring. Again, you can't cancel them out just yet, so we're going to go a step further. There's two recurring numbers, so times each side by a hundred. So that's one thousand x is equal to four six four point six four six four. And now notice the recurring parts cancel out when we subtract. So that leaves us with 990x is equal to 464 take away that. So that's 460. So we have 460 divided by 990. I mean, I could see the zeros would cancel out straight away. So that's 46 over 99. And that's that in its simplest form. Now moving on. Now we have three recurring digits. So we have one non-recurring digit and we have three recurring digits and that just tells us how many zeros we add when we multiply it so in this case we have x is equal to 0 0.1478478 and so there's one non-recurring digit so times by 10 times by 10 that gives me 10x is equal to 1.478478 Again, I can't just subtract these two because the recurring parts do not match up. This bit does not cancel out with this bit when I subtract. So if we go a step further, we've got three non-recurring digits. So that tells me I'm going to multiply each side by 1,000. 1,000 here. So on the left, I am now left with 10,000x is equal to 1478.478478 recurring. And now when I subtract this and this, this bit cancels out that bit. So on the right, I am left with 1477. And on the left, I am left with 10,000 minus 10. So that's going to be 9,990x. So we have 1477 divided by 9,990x. And that cannot be simplified. So that's 1477 divided by 9990. 
And again, hopefully press pause and add a good example on the rest. Right, sorry, I'm going to go a little bit quick through this one because I think I've got enough practice now for one nine. So there is one non recurring digit, so times 10 times 10. So that gives me 10x is equal to 4.5195.9. Now there are three recurring digits, so times each side by a thousand. So that's 10. 1000x is equal to 4519.5195195. And now if I subtract the two, the recurring part cancels out. And we are left with 9990x is equal to 451. And then you do 9 taken with that, which gives you 5. So we have 4515 divided by 9990. That should be 90, sorry. And we have x is 4515 divided by 9990, and that can be simplified down. So you can even look at it from, I guess, a five times table perspective to start with, and then that becomes 301 by 666. Now, moving on, now what's different with this example notice is the number of recurring digits. Non recurring digits are different. There's two non recurring digits, and there's one recurring digit. But again, all that's telling you is how many zeros you add when you multiply it. So we have x is equal to 0 0.14555. Okay, we start in the exact same manner. We write it out as a decimal. The next step's the exact same. How many non-recurring digits are there? Well, there's two. So we times each side by 100. Pop the decimal 2 to the right. Again, we can't just subtract these two because this bit does not cancel out this bit. So we go a step further. How many recurring digits are there? Well, there's just one five that recurs. So there's times 10 times 10. So that's 1000x is equal to 145.555 recurring. So on the left, we have 1000 minus 100. So that's going to give us 900x. And on the right, we have 14 take away 145 because the recurring parts cancel out. And that gives us 131. So we have x is equal to 131 over 900. And that cannot be simplified. So we leave that there. Again, press balls and I've got the example on the right. So there's two non recurring digits and one recurring digit. So we have x is equal to 0 0.28666 times each side by 10, sorry, 100, because there's two non-recurring digits. And now there is one recurring digit, so times each side by 10. So again, hopefully you've started to see the pattern here. You're looking for the number of non-recurring digits, if there are any. And then again, what you're multiplying it by just depends on how many digits are recurring or non-recurring so in this case that's that and the whole aim is to get it to a form where you can subtract the two that leads to cancelling out the recurring part and this is 900x and that's 286 minus 28 which is 258 so we have x is equal to 258 over 900 and if you do 258 you add that by 900 you can simplify that to 43 over 150 now moving on to looking at one more example like this. So here we have two non-recurring digits and two recurring digits, but it's the exact same approach that we're going to use. So I've got the colors in there. So we have x is equal to 0 0.154343. There is two non-recurring digits. So these do not recur. So that's 100x is equal to 15.4343. And then I have two recurring digits. So I times by 100 again because there's two recurring digits. So that gives me 10,000x is equal to 1543.4343. Now the recurring parts cancel out. So if I subtract these two on the left, I get 9,000. So sorry, we'll do the right first. We get 1543 take away 15. That is going to give me 1528. 
and on the right we have 10,000 take away 100 and that's going to give me 9,900 x and then we have x is equal to 1528 divided by 9,900 and in this case we can see that they are you know even both even numbers and you can always start with half and even numbers um, and then take it from there so that then in its simplest form becomes 382.2475 and again hopefully press pause and neglect the one on the right so it's the exact same principle step one how many non-recurring digits are there well there's two non-recurring digits so we can times each side by 100 so that's going to be 100 x is equal to 72.3939 step two how many recurring digits are there two so we can times each side by 100 again so that's 10,000 x and that's 7 2, 3, 9, point three nine recurring and now we can cancel out the recurring part so on the left we get 9,900 x is equal to so you have 7, 2, 3, 9, take away 72 which is 7, 1, 6, 7 we have x is equal to 7167 over 9900. And that in its simplest form can be written as 2389 over 3300. So, looking at the final part of this video, now sometimes in the exam paper you can get this question in two ways. Okay, one way is what we've been looking at, which is something like this, and the other way they can give you this question is like this. So the answer to this question, I can tell you now, is 61 over 495. But sometimes they can give it in this format, and it says prove. Okay, the working out is exactly the same. I'm going to start with the left-hand side. So you write x is equal to 0 0.1. The 2, 3 is recurring, so I'm going to write 2, 3 there, dot, dot, dot. Now there is 1 non-recurring digit, so I'm going to times each side by 10. So that gives me 10x. Okay, now there are two recurring digits, so times each side by 100. And now when I subtract the two, I can cancel out the recurring part, so that leaves me with 1, 2, 2. And we have... Uh, 1000 take away 10, so that's 990x. So we're left with 122 divided by 990. And you can half these two, so if you half um, 122, you get 61, and if you half 4990, you get 495. And now you might be wondering, okay, so sorry, let me just go back there. You might be wondering, well, okay, that's how you answer the question when it comes in this format, which is express this in its simplest form. But how do you answer this one? And you'd be glad to know. All you do is, I can literally just copy that, paste that there. It's the exact same working out. So the way you get the marks is very similar as well. So the marks here are more for showing, again, in both cases, you're getting method marks. But in this case, you're proving it. So you're starting off with this and you're working your way down to that. And, and you're pretty much doing the exact same on this side as well. You're starting off with this and you're working the way down. The only difference is in this case, they've given you the answer. In this case, they haven't. But the method is exactly the same. There is no difference at all. So when you ask to prove something, you just need to show this entire method, just like we've been doing before. Okay, so if I go on to the next example, Again, these two questions are both exactly the same. You would answer this the exact same way you would answer this, okay? So in this case, I'm just going to do the one on the right. Again, if you want to have a go yourself, you can press pause and have a go at this question. But to do the one on the right, again, both you answer in the exact same way. So that's 2, 3, 3, 3 recurring. Now there's one non-recurring digit, so times each side by 10. That gets rid of the non-recurring digit for me. And now there's one recurring digit which is three times each side by 10 again that gives me 100 x is equal to 23.333 and now i'm going to subtract the two and down here i have 23 take away two which is 21 
And here I have 100 minus 10, which is 90x. So we have x is equal to 21 over 90. Now 21 and 90 are both divisible by the 3 times table. 3 times 7 is 21. And 3 times 3 is 9. So that means 3 times 30 must be that. And that is how you write the answer to this question. And again, like I said before, answering this question and answering this question has the exact same working out. So we can literally just copy this into this side and it's the exact same, okay? So regardless of how you ask the question, you give the exact same working out. Now here are some practice questions for you to have a go at. They cover all the examples that we've covered. Press pause and have a go. When you're ready, press play for the answers. Here are the answers. Mark your work. Again, for these proved ones, I've just wrote show you working out because the answer is already given. But it's the exact same approach to show you working out for them. And thank you so much for watching. If you did find that useful, please consider subscribing. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.